want the exciting part now. This is <laughs> where you get to analyze the, the video. Oh, um, right. So <laughs> give me a second. I'll just share my screen. I'll be the one showing the video and then Omo talk to the first one. Um, I'm really excited about these guys because it's very different to other interviews that, 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 that you know, like the, the people do. So I think it's, it's very good. So we knew they come up with, with two forwards and we tried to, looking again at the characteristics of our players, uh, we wanted to be with, with three at the back to have that overload. We knew they were going to press with two high and that they will have that gap and then try to break with, with our two forwards and so side, you know. So we knew that bringing players from them forward, we were going to have a spaces in behind and the... You know, like obviously, and in here as well, we had Nat Jacobs. Nat Jacobs uh, was a player. Obviously, she's left now, but she's uh, he was playing fullback. But he was also a holding mid. Maybe she hasn't been played fullback for a while, but was a fantastic player to play out from the back. So she could play. You know, she could filter balls into midfield. She could play in behind. So what we were looking here it was to try to bring you know the attention or bring 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 players forward to create that gap that where we, we, we try to play the ball and then try to expose and get into this situation where Sosa can drive forward and you know commit players drive to the heart, which is something that we also spoke about. Is that little dribbling that she does over there and then obviously finish with with a cross. So. It's uh, uh, and then the reason to have Dorin and Gaga there it was to for to don't do Dorin is left footed and, and Gaga is right footed. So if we were playing left, Gaga was playing, if Dorin was playing, you know, like having that that different kind of profile and, and Levante to to don't know where we were playing, so they could they could uh, obviously focus their press. Uh, and and yeah, I think it worked it, it worked well on, on that day. Obviously, when you plan things, then sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But but uh, on this specific day, I think uh, despite playing a team that is supposed to be Champions League, which is not something where we uh, it was our target at the beginning of the year, it was something that that worked well. In terms of the back three, it's not super uncommon, right, to spread it across the width of the pitch because you want to spread the front two. But I I mean I was wondering like. Was that your objective, right? Did you want to make it very, very difficult for, for the front two to be able to press the wide yeah. center backs? Because sometimes when teams are facing a lot of pressure, they want the connections at the back to be a little tighter between the center backs because it's it's easier to make those passes. So what's the logic between this being so wide? Because, you know, Jacobs is all the way towards the touchline. And then I think it's Paula on the other side who's all the way on the touchline. So why so wide? Because what we wanted to create, it was forward to 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 have to recover more distance. So the space that uh, it gets open, it, it is bigger. And also the ball, I don't like too much when the play the balls are going just in a straight lines. I like more like I believe that the diagonal passes are normally more effective for the shape of the player to receive it. So that ball to Sosa, obviously things are not perfect. Maybe Nat is a bit too wide, but it's in the right the, in the right area that we want him for that game. But we can get that ball on a diagonal pass into midfield, and Sosa can receive already on the half turn, and then we can play forward easily. No, uh, it's just little little things to you know to 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 also confuse the position and and you know and think okay now and they actually change it on the on the on the second half they change the way they press on this game so it actually affect them and and you know they have to change things and then things are not working you see the gap in there is is quite big obviously the pass is is, is not good but it was something that we wanted to try and and in that game i think it, it, it worked well and and again looking at the characteristics of our players it, it makes us being able to 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 penetrate or to or to advance lines, so that was a little bit of the um, the logistics behind it or the ideas behind it. Okay, hey, fantastic, Abdullah. You want to take it on next, to the I'll take yeah. the next one. So the next one. So here we're gonna oops, we're gonna let this run through. So um, this is kind of an example of you kind of def you know better defending in, in a four four two or four four one one mid block, which seems fairly yeah. typical of your team anyway. But and what are the primary objectives when defending in this structure, and how do you assess your team's defending in this in this clip here specifically? So obviously the, the target for us is to reduce the distance between the lines. If you see there, for example, if you stop it there, we try to do a lot. Uh, one thing that in there you can see when when the ball goes wide is that the player on the on the wide area, let's say on the seven, like the right, the, when the ball gets to the fullback, you see the over, uh, next midfielders is at in a diagonal in a, di in a diagonal line, so you can see the back, and our next midfielder in a diagonal line, so we have 
uh, players cover in different spaces, but then we have also players on different highs, which is really important. In this case, actually, if you see Rinsola, Rinsola here should be much deeper. So in order to, obviously, Real Madrid is a team that has a lot of tools, but they have very good players that can play through the middle, you know? So, so that's a little bit of, of the idea behind it. We don't want to allow nothing going through the middle, and when the ball goes wide, then we can collapse and, and and that's one of our triggers to be able to press uh, by you see in there and I think in this game actually it's one of the games that hurt me because uh, actually in one of the situations where we were defending like this we didn't do it properly and then the goal came but if you see uh, how here our fullback and finally Rinsola there is in a good position because of the position uh, of the positioning of the holding midfielder is, is actually the holding midfielder the one that that can get because she to, she's very good at it anyway to read the run and and you know recover being able to recover the ball and then we try to be comfortable and do, do that with the three passes and and you know we try to be uh, very compact on that situation and obviously make it hard for the opposition to to break us through and from that moment then we can regain possession and we will assess if it's a moment for counter attack or if it's a moment to do those three passes and and from that block be able to expand and and be able to, to, to attack in a more organized attack. Very good clip as well. I will keep that one for myself. <laughs> we can so, send yeah. it to you. We'll send it to you. <laughs> so yeah, nice. this is this is another mid-block example, and this is back to the same Levante game. Yeah, so I mean, what I wanted to ask you specifically here is that your double pivot of Ana Gonzalez and Eva Yamas, they tend to be aggressive in stepping out when the opposition midfielders drop deep, or at least that's what I've seen in, in some of these games. Is that something you tell them to do? And how do you manage the risks that come with that? Because there will be space in their backs anytime one of them goes out to press. So you see, for example, Grace is a bit frustrated there if you see her with the arms open, because at that moment, maybe Sosa should be a little bit closer to that player. You see, she's going to press. It's obviously uh, close down one line. Uh, and, and the ball is getting to the midfielder. But one of the triggers that we use as well is not only when the ball goes wide, but when a player receives the ball within the block or, or in a situation where we can jump off, uh, when she receives back to the goal, they know we, that's the moment for us to, to, to engage. You see? Obviously, football is not perfect. In this clip, our back line is way too deep, you see? So that distance is too big. Our back line at that moment where the midfielder receives the ball, we should be higher. You know, like oh, Doreen, and, and we should be in that space is too, too low. But if you see, Anna has stepped up, but do you see how uh, Eva is covering that gap? And she's actually the one getting the ball. And then even if it is wide, and now if you look at Anna, imagine Anna now is the number 10. Now Sosa is covering that gap that Anna is leaving. It's not perfect, but it, she's around the area. And now when they try to filter that next ball, then look, the team is compacting there. You see, our four midfielders are in a very tight area and then the ball end up getting there to great that controls well then bang it's a goal you see so the reason why obviously there is a risk but we are not on the block to just defend the goal we are on the block to win the ball and be able to hurt the team you see so for me that's that's, that's the key that we are if we win it on that we call it zone three not zone one is our goal zone two is halfway of the pitch to the to the halfway line zone three zone four is the opposition half final third and, and, you know, the middle bit, more or less where that player is, it will be the limit between zone three, zone four. Uh, we encourage them to be uh, aggressive and attack the goal. So the block is a tool that we use to defend the goal, but also to be aggressive, win the ball and, 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 and go and score, you see? So in, in that moment, I, I want my midfielders to be, to be brave. And when a player is, we know what Ana Gonzalez is especially good at it and Eva as well to read what's, what's the next action that is going to happen, play it back to goal. You see, she engaged. Obviously, that time she didn't get it, but she comes back into shape, you know, and now Anna is the one engaging because in, that, in a perfect scenario, Sosa will be there, but football is not perfect, you know, like, and, and she recognizes that and, and that's it. And then the, the, she, look how quickly she's coming back to her position, you know, so that's obviously, you know, and closing the space. It's not just running out and, coming slowly, is closing down the line of pass towards the middle. So if you see her, you see, look, she steps up and now straight away that diagonal run, you see, she's covering the line of pass back into the space that she's, um, 
obviously release or no we try to work a lot in you release a player in a, in a press you need to stop the ball to that player but if you release a space then you cannot you, you kind of need to stop that space to be you know that taken by the ball or by the pass from the player so so yeah that's why we want to be we we are in the block but not to defend the goal we're in the block to regain possession and, and be aggressive to towards the opposition you know I think that that's the key message that the player needs to get. Say, okay, I'm defending because I'm going to score. No, I'm defending because I don't want them to score. Because if not, you win the ball and you're like panicking. That's the kind of situation that Barcelona takes you. Because Barcelona, when you win the ball, you have almost no chance to do anything. That That's what makes Barcelona great. They're great on the ball, but they're great off the ball. Like, you know, like they don't allow you to have chances. They don't allow you to be in the game. They don't allow you to get any flow. So so that's what psychologically so hard to play against them. This one is kind of a, uh, a corner kick routine. Basically, we want to like see if you can walk us through this this corner kick routine, why you designed it this way, and does anything about Madrid's defense that you were trying to exploit in this way. So we'll just go through the clip and then we'll see how this how this plays out. Obviously, in there, if you stop it there, obviously we have the Rins was playing on that game. So Rins in that situation of two v one, then Sosa can decide if give it to to Rins to then deliver and then the ball go to the to the back post or try to make one of those runs. Similar, this this clip is very similar to the goal we score against Levante because players are always instructed to go in front of the mark. Like you can see there, Eva Llamas, number eight, uh, number six, stepping in front of the defender. But then we also knew that the keeper of uh, Misa had, uh, has issues with that kind of delivery coming out, you know, like going in and, and to go out. So, uh, and Sosa has a fantastic delivery on, on that kind of shape and angle. So the, the idea was to try to get the ball there to the back post for, for Ana Gonzalez. They actually considered a goal very, very similar setup against, against Seville. But you can see that delivery, how the keeper, the, the defender clear it because Ivana is good, but the keeper never got to it. <laughs> So that actually worked. And then Anna, if Anna, if, if Ivana wasn't doing that well, then Anna had a free header. So it's just one of those little details in football. I like when you play this kind of clip because it's not a goal, but if it's a goal, everyone will be talking, oh, look, wow, very good routine. Yeah. No, I think you got there. But well, actually, actually, I think Anna actually connects with the ball. So she should have done better than I thought Ivana cleared that one. I will. No, I will no, she that. doesn't. I think, I think, oh. I think, yeah. yeah. She wins the header and, and, she yeah, could have done better. I'm I'm excited to see how how Real Madrid fans react to this little criticism of Misa. <laughs> but yeah. I think I think it's really interesting. <laughs> I think it's really interesting though that that was something you were looking to explain. It was just that obviously with the Real Madrid keepers, I'm a, I'm a bit biased. No, Misa is a great goalkeeper, but I had the privilege and uh, to work with Melin all last year. Fantastic girl, fantastic goalkeeper. No, uh, um, she's a great great. I think for us, she was she was key last year. I think it's not a secret. Uh, she was uh, a key key player for us, and and it was a privilege to 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 have coach her. So she she's obviously you know like uh, of the two. I don't know Misa personally, so of the two, obviously she's she's my favorite of the keepers there. <laughs> And she was she was obviously brought in to to provide something different as well. So yeah, she yeah. was outstanding for us. Obviously, she is not easy when you are a goalkeeper from a team that is fighting for relegation that you get uh, taken by the team that finished second in the league. You no, know, that says a lot about her. So 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 yeah. But Misa is a fantastic goalkeeper and is probably the future of one of the, the key key goalkeepers for the future. It, do, it doesn't matter. You can say whatever you want now. Everyone will just focus on that one thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about Grace Asantegua quite a bit, but we needed to have a clip here. So as you're watching this, she's obviously one of the top goal scorers in the team, but she also seems to add a lot outside the box, particularly through her back-to-goal play, like in this clip. Can you talk about all that she offers you and how you seek to exploit her skills? I mean, you obviously talked about moving her position and everything, so if you can just expand on that. Yeah, I think that in there, when I, it's good that you saw that, that clip because I think when we spoke about the profile of, of players, uh, we spoke that that's something that her and Mappy, they both uh, get in common, no? Uh, the playing back to goal, no? Grace is outstanding at holding up play, but not only holding up, but also turning. Uh, obviously, she's a midfielder, so she's used to receive under pressure. She's used to, uh, you know, receive on the front foot or on the back foot, protect the ball. Uh, you see how she uses her body and her technical ability is outstanding. Like, uh, she's... 
a, a special player in, in the aspect. So one thing that we did a lot, he was trying to, on that role as a number nine, it was a lot about working with her on trying to be on the side of the ball because obviously that's something number nine so sometimes is, oh, I'm going to be here between the center backs or, or whatever, but it's not okay. They're attacking us through the left. You see how she's already occupying this area. Uh, and then when well, Brie on that game, she was the other one coming from the inside. But uh, I think it's very, it's very important her back to goal and, and her movement. If you look in there, she's done two, three, four movements before getting the ball breaks into the space and then when she faces you it's even worse than if she receives back to goal so obviously it's a very very hard player to defend because if you don't leave her any space then she can play the ball and now she stays in space you see but if you give her some space and she faces you uh, she's deadly as well so as a center back you are phew, what do i do you know like he's one of those players that can okay back to goal i have no issues uh, or is because he, she has both tools ability here, ambition to play that back flick into the space. Those are the kind of attributes that I, to look, I try to look into players when uh, me together with, with my technical team, you know, like I have an unbelievable analyst or assistant coach in Jesus, Jesus Botello, who is a, a specialist on seeing these kind of things as well. So uh, uh, he helps me a lot when we make this, this kind of decision. So uh, we look a lot of the players in, in a holistic approach in, and that means as well is he strong enough to, to work hard off the ball on the press is he strong enough to you know like uh, deal with failure and uh, in front of goal because uh, when we started to put Grace in front of goal there's a little secret like a training she was creating all sorts of super cut, clear, clear cut chances but she was missing them so when we were putting her in the games, then she started scoring them. So it was one of those things that we were like, wow, now, now she's making them real, you know? But we knew because, you know, sometimes it was like an easy fail or whatever. So we had a lot of faith in her. She's a great girl. It's developing in that position, but she can play. She's played for us on the left in holding mid. And, 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 I, and I believe, and she was told the other day, but some of her teammates in a little dynamic that we did, that the future for her is, is shining, is, is exciting, and, and whatever is the position, maybe it's not where she's going to play the whole of her career, but at the moment she's, you know, the other day they were calling her, you know, in, in some media, the, the revelation of the league because of the things that she's doing, and and we're not even having probably the, how I would say, the vision or, or the game shown on TV as much as, as other clubs for people to say that. So I'm, 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 I'm glad you, you chose that clip, and, and uh, I hope that, that, that she keeps... Uh, growing in that position in in others because she is a great girl and, a, and an amazing talent that again I have the privilege to have in the team. We planned actually to include clips from more games. So I watched Alaves, I watched Athletic Bilbao. This is all 2022, but yeah. the camera angle just it wasn't it wasn't yeah. good enough. Yeah, <laughs> so I just I, I just went with these two. But um yeah this is this is it. These are these are the these this is the last yeah. clip. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I hope it was oh, useful for you.